Hi, I'm Robert, and welcome back to another edition of the High Desert Ranch channel. Today, I'm going to, by requests and some demand from some folks that, that are subscribers to the channel, I'm going to take you through my setup for my pigs, where um, you can raise comfortably 80 to 100 piglets a year, no problem, and where I've seen enough and I've been around enough uh, pig setups to know that it's the setup that makes all the difference. So come along and join me as I help to not only show you uh, what I'm doing, but possibly even help answer some questions if you're looking to build uh, what I like to call uh, the perfect pig setup, only on the High Desert Ranch channel. All right, so um, it really does come down to you know, what exactly it is you want to do, whether you're going to be just raising um, two or three pigs a year to feed out, or if you're going to be an actual like breeding operation like it is here at the ranch. Um, it's something that it requires a little bit of planning and a little bit of effort up front, but when you do, the long-term results are great. Um, you don't have to worry about pigs getting out because, believe it or not, Pigs are destructive. Uh, it's just in their nature. They don't intentionally try and be destructive. It's just, like I say, they like to root. Uh, they they grow large. Um, whether or not you're raising just a feeder pig to market weight, or you're going to have some of your breeding stock, you need to build a strong fence and have a very strong um, qualities when you build your pig pen. So. Um, right here I'm going to start out first with my first pen. I have uh, six pens right here and let me just flip around and show you. So here's my hog pen. It's 16 by 24 and I have a, a 8 by 8 shelter. Right now there's just little feeder piglets in here um, Then I can actually move over but as you can see it's eight by eight. I've wrapped the the columns, the outside of the columns with the tin to help protect them against the weather, but also against rubbing. Hogs like to rub, and so it helps to protect the, the wood posts. Um, a solid gate, it's just your standard gate that you can pick up for, you know, it's a four foot wide gate. But each of these posts, with the exception of this T post, because eventually I would like to possibly expand to include another pen, but you'll notice that um, I have these old power poles that you can pick up uh, for a small fee from your local power company or whatnot. Um, and I put these every four feet. And they're every four feet, and they're three to four feet in the ground. Because if you don't, your bore is going to get out. And I'll bring them out. I'll show you how big the bore is. They just... They, they'll push, they just, they're naturally, like I say, they're destructive. And you'll notice in each one of these pig pens, I've just taken the 35 gallon um, plastic barrel and I've cut them up in half to use for the feed and then for the, the their water. And so that's a, that's a cheap way to do it because I'll also show you an example of where I bought some feeders and they just get hammered and banged up. And um, so there's some really expensive feeder options, which I might consider doing, but again, you've got to be making some, some money with your hogs in order to, to think about doing that. So for now, these plastic barrels, they work just fine. I picked them up for free they, and I used a Sawzall and they work great. So here's these little guys. So next, this is just a, uh, a feeder pen or a pen where I have, uh, I'm, you can keep uh, a litter with with her with the sow um, but then specifically right here here's the two gilts that have yet to be bred um, and this shed is actually the farrowing shed and all these can be farrowing sheds but this one is specifically for cold weather um, and they're slightly larger they're <clears throat> they are eight by ten uh, just because I want a little bit bigger, a little bit more room for the, the piglets and their sows if they're in cold weather. And the nice part is, is I can take that gate and I can swing over 
to close off the, the sow so she can't get out and um, I can even block it off with some boards just to make it slightly warmer and this pen right here is uh, it's also a 16 by 24 foot pen and again you'll notice that not as crazy and stout as the bore pen but I've still got uh, corner posts with the power poles and then cedar posts and some heavy duty T posts every four feet uh, three to four feet in the ground so and again this is just a mirrored situation right here um, here's the uh, the boar and the sow so the sow is the one that's up front and there's uh, Boromir our boar and he's a good sized boar as you can see this fence is a three foot high fence and they're almost up to the top so they're um, it's actually just slightly over three feet so they stand almost three feet uh, off the ground to the top of their shoulders. They're hungry, they want a little bit of breakfast. And then this pen is resting. This is one that over the winter I had to create, I had, we had nine pigs here just to help survive. And so I'm letting it rest with some lime and then I'll take it, uh, we'll take and scrape it off. So, and then here's two um, first year gilts. They've been bred, so they'll be uh, farrowing in September. So. Um, they're here in this larger pen. This is actually what I have like my sow pen so um, I've got the two the two Farrowing pens with the sheds. I've got the one boar pen and then I've got two just like feeder pens if I wanted And then I've got uh, this this pen where I can keep sows that have been bred or yet to be bred uh, As you can see it's slightly larger. I start out the 16 by 24 and then I moved and actually expanded it to almost double the, the capacity. And that, as you notice, it's it's uh, also a slightly larger pen. It is uh, uh, eight feet deep and ten feet wide, so uh, I can easily keep four to five full-grown sows um, in there at a time. And uh, again, I've gone with the the uh, cedar posts and. The, the old power poles and uh, heavy duty T posts every four feet in the ground. Um, I did do, um, you'll notice this, I've done T posts right here uh, in between um, at the front of each hog uh, pen. That way I can get in a small tractor or skid steer to be able to uh, do whatever cleanup and things that I need. So, and I am a huge believer in this, especially if you're going to run just even a small operation like this. You want to have some sort of loading uh, ramp. It's it's already difficult enough sometimes to load pigs. There's always one, and one of these days I'm going to record that, or you can actually see that in one of the videos I'll post in the video description below. It's hard enough, and as I've said too, um, the only thing prone on a ranch is something temporary. So I'm going to show you the loading ramp that I have that I've actually really got to fix up and make it nice, and then also the 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 the, the alleyway leading up to the chute. It's only made out of panel. I really need to get some heavy duty pipe or rough cut lumber because when you're pushing hogs, they push on it and it flexes and um, it just, it'd be a lot better. But um, so definitely you're gonna want some sort of a loading ramp, which I also use to help load up the cattle, but it loads up the pigs and it just, you can put them straight up into the chute, um, up into your trailer from the chute into the trailer. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So there's my loading ramp. Again, it's just uh, temporary, but as time and funds permit. And then you can see where I have my alleyway and it's flexed a little bit, especially on this outside edge. But um, it just, it doubles as a border for the this other sow pen. And this is kind of the part that I really like that I planned on. So here's your working alley, actually. I've used this perimeter fence over here. And then what I can easily do is either take pigs and load them up into the trailer, or I can open up any one of these gates and just set some pallets and some boards and work the, and move pigs from pen to pen. And here's a little bit closer look at the inside of this farrowing shed as you can see it's uh plenty of space walled off in between and um, got this opening that i can close and uh, shut up so there can be some protection because it gets very cold here in the high desert
at over 6,000 feet in the winter time. So there you have it. There's this old ditch system that um, we had to use this year because of all the water, but um, it still wasn't much of a problem. So I've come full. So if there's one thing that you'll notice is um, uh, contrary to the to the YouTube myth is you don't need a lot of space to raise hogs, and that's what's made them great over the centuries uh, for the. For the working man, for someone who doesn't have a lot of money, uh, you can use behind this haystack. You can uh, raise some hogs on not a lot of space, and so each one of these pens is uh, is a 16 by by 24, uh, with exception to, to the sow pen. It's a little bit bigger, but uh, uh, it's still not a lot of room, and so you can comfortably raise uh, over 200, or excuse me, uh, comfortably raise 100 piglets a year. Uh, to, to sell and even keep a few back to feed out uh, on not a lot of space. In fact, here my setup is smaller than a lot of people's homes. So it's roughly about 2,500 square feet that I have um, set up to for this operation. Uh, if I were to expand, it'd probably be one more um, pen right here where this haystack is and then something something over by that uh, that feed silo so again there you have it that's uh that's pretty your your basic pig setup uh it's it does require a little bit of work but it doesn't need to be anything fancy it's all about how you build your fence and uh, for me when i have this linear setup that's why i like to have that working alley is because i can move pigs back and forth and realistically uh you can basically move the pigs by yourself almost uh, it's always helpful again to have another hand uh, if you're going to do that uh, I do need to fix that uh, uh, that alleyway leading up to the ramp just make it a little bit more stout so I can actually uh, work the pigs um, a little bit better especially by myself too uh, I can always be a little comical uh, when you're loading and my, my two brother-in-laws that came for Independence Day they, they figured that out so uh, anyways guys that's uh, I think that's gonna do it uh, if if you don't build a good fence and good pens and everything else you're gonna have constant repair and maintenance problems and if you live close by or right next to somebody your pigs are gonna get out and you're gonna get calls from neighbors and they're, they're tearing things up so uh, that's about all I can think of if you have any additional questions or comments please leave them in the in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them and it might even lead to the creation of another video. Again, this is why I do this channel. I do it for you guys. And you remember, you only get so many trips around the sun, so decide what it is you're gonna do uh, today and get after it. And I hope that I was your ticket to help escape the ordinary and find out just what it's like to live the high life here in the high desert of the Intermountain West, only on the High Desert Ranch channel.